This question is dangerous. It is definitely the case that with just a little bit of shortcutting, you can feel like you're getting the right answer, but actually be wrong. So we don't really want to shortcut this thing too much. We also need to have one piece of information memorized, and that is what does it take to have lines that are perpendicular to each other? Uh, the real rule here is that we need to have, um, let me put it up here, negative reciprocal slopes. So we need to uh, be able to think of the slope basically as a fraction, and then we want to flip that fraction upside down and negate it. And that's how we get the slopes of perpendicular lines. So we should do that first with the lines that are here. Again, there might be ways to shortcut this. I just, I don't trust them. I think people mess them up more often than, than not. So let's get this into y equals mx plus b format. So we're going to do that for this one. So I'm going to subtract the 5x, subtract the 5x. So I have 7y is equal to negative 5x plus one. I really don't care about the one. I really just want to get the slope. So if I divide by seven, I get y is equal to negative five sevenths x plus one seven, and it's the negative five sevenths that I care about. That means the slope of the other line is going to be, uh, let's put it over here, negative five sevenths is going to be perpendicular to flip it and reverse it, right? So it was negative, now it's positive, it was five over seven, now it's seven over five. That's what we mean by negative reciprocals. So I have to do that with this A and this B, I guess, to see what those values would be. My guess is they're going to be 7 and 5, but let's just get this thing into Y equals MX plus B format as well. So let's subtract the AX. So we get BY is equal to negative AX. I'm going to drop the 1. I don't care about it. So B divided by B, we get our slope is negative A over B X. So we have to compare that with this. So notice one thing that's weird here is there's no negative. So we should make the A, let's say negative seven, and the B five. So it doesn't, it doesn't quite look like a negative seven in there, but it is, let's fix that so we don't lose track of that negative. So negative seven and five. Uh, so uh, now let me think about that. Is that right? Because then this would be negative negative seven. Oh my gosh, I'm already worried about it. So that would be negative negative seven over five, which is positive seven over five, which is the slope we need it to be. Oof, okay, there you go. Now the same thing needs to happen in uh, these equations. In this case, I don't know, I might just go to Desmos here and now knowing the values of seven and of A and B, I might just try to graph these things. So let's do that. Uh, let's write it here. So what did I say? A is negative seven. B is five. Okay. So A, uh, well, we can do this. So this would be 10. Choice A is 10x plus 7y is equal to one. And uh, negative 7x uh, minus two times B is 10y equals one. So what do we have? Those do not look perpendicular to me, right? They're going the same direction basically. So no. Uh, choice B, where you have the same top equation, but we have a different bottom equation. So that is going to be negative seven uh, X plus two times B. So that's plus 10 Y equals one. That looks pretty good, right? That looks, that looks perpendicular. So I would say that that's probably it. And I like that the two things are, are switched with the negative in one place and not in the other. And it wouldn't really have mattered if I did it the other way, I'm pretty sure. So this is probably gonna be the answer. Um, I could try the others just to be sure. I mean, it looks perpendicular. The only thing I worry about for you guys is sometimes when you play with Desmos and you start kind of zooming in and out, you you smush. See, look, if I, if I change the scaling, then I end up with something that doesn't look perpendicular even though it is. The way to fix that is always to hit that home button in the top right, and that's gonna bring you back to a square grid. So it is perpendicular, let's just save it there. That is the answer. We don't need to do the others. Um, but that's the way I would do it. Now again, when I have the right answer, I can see that there is a little bit of like a convenient thing happening, right? We, we wanna flip the fraction and negate it, and so what ends up happening is looking at the, the coefficients of the X and Y, we end up switching the position of the 10 and the seven and one of them gets negated. And even if I had done, instead of negative seven and five, if I had done seven and negative five, it still would be the same thing, that I'd have these, these numbers switched and one negative and one positive. So um, there is a little bit of a shortcut there, but I'm just so nervous about it. I just know how the SAT does this kind of stuff. I can tell from the answer choices that they're trying to mess with us and yeah, 
I just don't want to get messed with is really what it comes down to. So try to think about that as you're doing questions. Sometimes the longer path through an answer to an answer is better because it will guarantee that you did not make a mistake and fall for a trap when there clearly is one on a question like this. But if you've got something else clever, feel free to put in the comments. I'm always looking for, for new stuff.